guys, what's going on? Welcome to another video on my channel, Hair Literacy. If you guys are new to the channel, please make sure to hit that subscribe button so you guys are updated on hair loss and hair transplant topics. Visit my website at hairliteracy.com to purchase your micro needle device, which is scientifically proven to stimulate hair growth, my low-level laser therapy cap, DHT blocking shampoo and serum, hair growth vitamins, and a few other products for those who are suffering from hair loss. In today's video, I wanted to share with you a post that I saw on Tressless regarding a 40-year-old guy who shared his experience after being on finasteride for 20 years. I actually covered a similar topic last month regarding a guy who was on finasteride for about 23 years. So I think it's always interesting to hear about the experiences of people who are taking finasteride uh, for the long run and also to see kind of like how the hair has been progressing over the years, in addition to finding out about any potential side effects that they were experiencing while taking finasteride long-term. We don't come across a lot of these posts on people sharing their experience from using finasteride for 20 plus years. So every time that I do find something like this, I think it's always worth sharing with you guys. I'm assuming that most people who are on my channel probably have been on Finasteride for the past few years or are looking to get started and hopefully we can get more exposure on individuals who are using this drug long term so that it can help for those who are deciding on whether or not to take Finasteride. With current hair loss medications, you have to commit to hair loss, um, you know, the hair loss drugs in the long run. The moment that you guys actually stop taking it is when you're likely to lose all of the gains that you had. And this applies to, you know, just all types of hair loss medications, whether they're 5 ARs, you know, finasteride to tasteride, growth agonists like minoxidil, and even microneedling and laser therapy, and also even topical and oral antiandrogens. This is even more important, especially after a hair transplant, because unless you're willing to, you know, play a game of constantly catching up with hair loss, you also need to address the native hairs that are still going to be genetically prone to androgenic alopecia. And let's not forget that oftentimes with FUE, there is a good amount of hairs that are taken outside of the so-called safe donor zone. So in order to fully protect all of the hairs on your scalp, regardless of whether they were transplanted or not, you want to get on hair loss medication in the long run. So this guy's been taking finasteride ever since he was 20 years of age and he's currently 40. He did give us a baseline of what his hair looked like when he was 25. And honestly speaking, his case wasn't really even that bad to begin with. He started with the typical, you know, the temple recession and some thinning around his hairline, around a nowhere two, maybe 2.5 at most, but nothing major. And if you take a look at his current state, it looks like his hair loss was indeed stabilized from further miniaturization as a result of finasteride. The good thing is that on the first onset of hair loss, he was being very proactive and he got started on finasteride right away which I think is a key point um, for those who are noticing early signs of hair loss. It's a lot easier to treat hair loss in the early stages of miniaturization versus trying to treat hair loss after you've experienced a moderate amount of losing hair. And he's been lucky enough because at 40 years of age, his hair loss has been very minimal and the medication obviously has been responding pretty favorably for him. If he wanted, he could have also probably just got a small hair transplant procedure to fill in the temples and add a density to the hairline. And it's probably easy for him to be back to a Nord 1 type of hairline with a full head of hair. But he did state in his post that he was content with how his hair is right now so that there's no need for him to get a hair transplant, at least not in the near future. He also mentioned that he's been on a minoxidil 5% for the past eight years and there was a point where he actually started seeing his vertex thinning. But after continued use of minoxidil, he was able to gain back his density. And from this photo here, his vertex looks pretty normal to me with no signs if little miniaturization. As far as any sides from taking finasteride over the past 20 years, he said he's had none, which is uh, not surprising. The vast majority of finasteride users are not going to experience any adverse side effects. There's multiple studies that confirm this and the majority of finasteride users are going to be able to reap the benefit of having their hair loss slowed down and stabilize. The only thing I would recommend is for you to always get baseline blood work done uh, prior to taking any drugs like 5 ARs, finasteride, dutasteride. Because if you're taking a drug that is going to alter your hormonal profile, there is a small chance that some may experience side effects associated from finasteride, you know, low libido, sexual dysfunction, 
things like that. So by having a baseline for your blood work, it's gonna be a lot easier to reverse these potential side effects if we have something to compare your baseline levels with in the first place. Um, with that said, most people don't even have to worry about this, but this obviously is more of a precautionary measure, especially for those who just wanna be careful, especially if you know uh, that if you actually have borderline low or even high levels of testosterone, estrogen, SHBG, it would be a good idea to get your blood work done. Going down the comments, there were a lot of good questions that were actually asked. The first one asked about hair loss stabilization after 20 years of finasteride. He responds by saying that he did definitely have a bit more hair 20 years prior, but he attributes finasteride in drastically slowing down his receding hairline. But he also acknowledges the fact that finasteride has not fully stopped it. And I think that he makes a great point here because finasteride is not going to fully stop hair loss 100%. We know that one milligram inhibits about 65, 70% scalp and serum DHT. So it doesn't completely wipe away 100% of DHT that's in our bodies. And if you're genetically sensitive to even the small remnants of DHT that's still in your system, you are very likely to continue to miniaturize. And this is even an, you know, accounting for the fact that there are still other endogenous androgens circulating in the body. And with an increase of about 15% in testosterone levels from oral intake of finasteride, the hair follicles are not going to be protected. And this is why you also see people who are even on testosterone, which nearly wipes about 100% of DHT, um, yet they still continue to lose their hair because there are other endogenous androgens in the body that can still cause miniaturization. And at this point, we know that even testosterone, which has a weaker androgenic profile, is still able to bind to the androgen receptors and cause havoc. But this guy has been lucky enough where hair loss wasn't even that severe to begin with. Finasteride has been working really well with minimal progression of hair loss and I don't actually foresee him needing any stronger treatments. Uh, moving on, another person asked if he had stopped taking finasteride prior to getting children. And if so, how long he had stopped for and if he's lost gains during the period he was off finasteride. This obviously is an important question to ask, particularly for those who are looking to, you know, starting a family, but worried about hair loss caused from temporary cessation of finasteride. Turns out that this guy continued to take finasteride during the uh, time that his wife was conceived, and they now have a healthy boy and a girl with no issues. I have yet to come across a study or a case where somebody has been taking finasteride concurrent while getting their partner pregnant and ended up with a defective child. Prior studies that looked into the possibility of defects in fetuses while taking finasteride uh, were actually all stemmed from animal studies who were exposed to just huge and huge levels of finasteride. And if you do some reading through some of these studies, these pregnant monkeys were directly given oral finasteride in large quantities, which contributed ultimately to male you know, offspring who had abnormalities of the sex organs. Pregnant rats who were also given large amounts of finasteride directly also had increased risks of preterm birth and impaired cognitive function in newborns. Some doctors even say that it's safe to take finasteride as long as it doesn't come in contact with someone who is pregnant. You obviously wouldn't want your wife taking finasteride or coming in contact while she's pregnant because this can theoretically you know, increase the chances of a male offspring with potential defects. But like I said, we have yet to see a case where this has resulted in abnormal sex organs in male human fetuses. I can actually relate to this question because in my case, I had stopped taking finasteride for maybe about a, about a month, month and a half uh, before my wife conceived. While I did know that even if I were on finasteride, there wouldn't really be any issues, but since small traces of finasteride can actually be found in semen, I wanted to play it safe and just eliminate any what ifs in case something were to happen. And let me just say that even though semen contains small traces of finasteride, it's so minimal that it's likely not going to have any side effects. And like I said, unless you're exposing your wife to just abnormally huge amounts of finasteride orally, this is not even gonna be a problem. And this also relates to the fact that you shouldn't take finasteride, particularly for guys who are still undergoing sexual development because if you're not fully developed and you start taking finasteride, uh, and I'm talking about teenagers, you know, who are still experiencing, you know, early signs of hair loss and looking to take finasteride despite not having gone through puberty, this can actually halt the development of your sex organs. So doctors typically are not going to prescribe you finasteride until you're uh, fully sexually matured in development. Now moving down, somebody asked about any cognitive side effects. He replied, not that I ever noticed, nothing that has affected my personal or professional life. Then again, 20 years is a long time and my memory was probably better back then for many reasons. Good thing is that, you know, his cognitive function is still intact because some finasteride users actually complain 
about experiencing cognitive decline and brain fog can be a big possibility. You know, some people do suffer from depression from taking finasteride and I've actually covered a separate video on this. So it is very likely, uh, but thankfully this guy after 20 years has not had any side effects pertaining to cognitive impairment. Moving down to comments, somebody asked about side effects again and replied by stating, none that I've noticed since starting treatment 20 years ago, I met my wife, got married and had two healthy children now who are nine and 11. It's actually one boy and one girl in case you guys were wondering. All the important parts work, which he's obviously referencing to his sexual function. My biggest concern, um, he says with finasteride is the potential side effects to the prostate. I get a physical every year, which includes a PSA test. And so far the number is always about as low as you can get. My dermatologist actually requires a yearly PSA screen before she will renew the finasteride prescription. So a few comments about what the original poster said here. Uh, finasteride was actually prescribed and it still lists in addition to other five ARs like the Tastride for the treatment of enlarged prostates. People who are suffering from benign prostatic hyperplasia are prescribed 5 mg finasteride daily, which help inhibit testosterone from you know, converting to DHT through 5 alpha reductase inhibition, which in turn is going to shrink the prostate. The PSA test, which is the prostate specific antigen, is a blood test that is specifically used to screen for prostate cancer amongst um, other abnormalities in the prostate checks for a specific protein in the prostate and what that, uh, when that level is elevated to a certain amount, it can be indicative of certain prostate disorders. Malignancy is also included. Typically, men without prostate cancer have PSA levels under four nanograms per milliliter. Anything between four to 10 um, is going to result in one out of four men with prostate cancer. And anything higher than 10 um, they are going to have a 50% or higher chance of having prostate cancer. However, finasteride will also reduce PSA levels by about 50%. This obviously is not going to be a good thing because it doesn't reveal the actual PSA level. And for somebody who is on finasteride, this can mask certain diseases since PSA numbers are not going to be accurate. So unless he already has a baseline of PSA levels that's been stable for the past few years with no regular spikes, I would actually also recommend a digital rectal exam to check the prostate since prostate cancer is common as you get older. So overall, this guy is a classic example of somebody who's been on fast ride for a long duration of time without experiencing any adverse side effects. Statistically, you guys are not going to experience any adverse side effects from a fast ride, even from long-term use. And this guy is a very good prime example of Finasteride's efficacy as he has had minimal side effects and hair loss over the past two decades. I personally use Finasteride for about four to five years now and um, I also have no side effects and it's actually been able to stabilize further progression of hair loss and miniaturization. So get with your doctor if you're looking for an FDA approved hair loss treatment that works in the majority of users. Make sure to get blood work done, especially if you're prone to, you know, higher low levels of, um, you know, hormones. Others have found success from using experimental antiandrogens that target the androgen receptors directly. But in my case, I'm sticking with finasteride, minoxidil, and um, you know, something that's actually been well studied long term with proven efficacy, and is backed up by other long term users where the majority will not experience any side effects. We unfortunately do not have any approved or FDA approved antiandrogens. But we do have Brizula, which is currently undergoing phase three clinical trials. Uh, so if all goes well, this would be the first anti-androgen, uh, topical anti-androgen to be approved for the treatment of hair loss. And as soon as I hear back on any updates, I will keep you guys posted. Don't get your hopes up yet. I think it will uh, get FDA approval just because of um, the acting treat, but it did get approved. So I don't see any issues with this getting approved. But like I said, it's gonna be a matter of years before we actually see all of the commercialization and FDA approval and all of that good stuff. So until then, you know, stick with current hair loss medications uh, that do work and is shown to work in the majority of people. Thanks for watching guys. If you have any questions, make sure to leave us in the comments below and let me know what your thoughts are on taking finasteride long-term. And if you've actually taken finasteride or currently taken finasteride, you know, for a long time or it's been a while, let me know, share with us your experience. If you've had any side effects, you know, good things like that. Thanks for watching guys. And I'll talk to you guys in my next video. Take care.